Are we using the wrong kind of electricity? What do you mean, wrong electricity, Sabina? What's there to be wrong? Well, well, we use alternating currents that switch polarity. But the big vision for the energy transition is that we'll all have solar panels to charge batteries and we'll all drive electric vehicles. And those all work with the direct currents. This is why direct current technology has been seeing a huge revival in the past decade. Could this make electricity cheaper? Let's have a look at what's going on. I just spent the weekend reading an extra fat issue of The Economist about the world ahead in 2026. I'm happy they are supporting Science News by sponsoring this channel because I think it's a publication that aligns very well with the interests of my audience to stay on top of what's happening in the world. The Economist covers everything from economics to science, politics, technological developments and global affairs. I generally find their reporting to be balanced, well-written and to the point. The recent issue of The World Ahead in 2026 has given me a really good overview of the most important developments that will likely shape the year ahead. Personally, I prefer the print version, but The Economist also has an app that carries their daily journalism as well as subscriber-only podcasts podcasts and longer video discussions with their editors. And if you prefer listening while you're on the go, they of course also have audio versions of their articles. I feel much better informed since I'm reading The Economist. And if this sounds like the right thing for you too, make sure to use my link economist.com slash Sabine because that will get you 35% off. And now back to the science news. One of the most epic fights in science ever was certainly the war of currents between Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla over the way of using electricity. Edison advocated direct current, DC for short, that flows in only one direction, whereas Tesla pushed for alternating current, AC for short, that switches back and forth in direction. Tesla won that argument partly by arguing that alternating currents are less likely to roast in this on people, but mostly because of economic reasons. Alternating currents were less lossy when transferred over long distances, so Tesla's system scaled better. Which is why, if you today plug a device into a socket, you're getting an alternating current that reverses its direction 50 or 60 times a second, depending on where you live. But secretly and deep down, most of our electronic devices actually run on DC. Phones and laptops, microwaves, Wi-Fi routers, LEDs, they all run on DC. Indeed, it's easier to list the devices that don't run on DC, primarily those which use the current to generate heat, electric ovens, toasters, and quite possibly the thing that I got for Christmas from my mother-in-law. Though for most of those, there are DC alternatives. The European Association of Distribution System Operators has estimated that by 2030, up to 80% of energy demand in homes will be by DC-powered devices. It's not not just homes, it's industry too. Most IT equipment runs internally on DC, so do most electronics, large or small. The semiconductor industry uses a lot of DC and the telecom infrastructure too. Now add to this that solar panels and wind turbines generate direct current and that converting back and forth inevitably leads to losses. And it seems crazy that we'd use AC, doesn't it? This is why DC is making us slow but persistent comeback. China, for example, has built thousands of kilometers of high-voltage DC power connections between the western part of the country, where they produce huge amounts of renewable energy, and the eastern part, where most people live. India has done a similar thing. In Europe, we now have multiple high-voltage DC connections between countries to make grid balancing more efficient across borders. The Americans have had a high-voltage DC connection on the West Coast since the 1970s, but in the past couple of years, governmental programs have provided support for DC projects and there has been industry interest as well. Analysts project that the DC market will almost double in the next 10 years. But wait, wasn't the reason we use AC in the first place that it's less lossy over long distances? 
Yes and no. Both AC and DC have less transmission losses at high voltage. But 100 years ago, transforming up DC incurred more losses than transforming up AC. Now the technology for DC is improved, and in many cases, it's become the better option. But the high voltage power lines aren't the real driver behind the DC revival. The real driver is what's become called microgrids. These are basically small networks of DC power lines designed for houses, factories, or sometimes commercial districts. For example, in 2023, the Dutch built a microgrid for commercial district where street lights, shops, and EV chargers now run directly on DC. In the US, the Living Energy Farm in Virginia has operated entirely on a solar-powered DC microgrid since 2017, supplying homes and workshops without any AC conversion. There are similar projects in other countries. Many companies have picked up on the trend and are building DC-compatible equipment like circuit breakers, up-down converters, etc. But how much of an advantage is it really? Numbers are hard to come by, but here is an example. A few years ago, Purdue University retrofitted a real 1920s house to run primarily on direct current, solar panels, battery storage, a DC-powered heat pump, etc. They just published a preliminary result and found that they cut electricity use for heating and cooling by roughly 12 to 17 percent. But overall, studies have found that the savings are small for general homes in the range of of 2 to 15 percent, and the high end applies only when using solar batteries and EVs. This means that for most homes, the cost of retrofitting doesn't make sense. However, switching to DC microgrids might make sense for new data centers or certain types of factories or new buildings. My guess is that this trend towards DC will continue, and while it won't change the world, it'll make parts of it more efficient. A micro-revolution, so to speak. Hello? It's Thomas Edison. He says, I told you so. In Germany, we celebrate Christmas on the evening of December 24th. So when this video goes live, I'll be sitting under the tree with my family drinking sparkling wine because that's how we do it. And because I don't want you to think you need to check YouTube when you should be spending time with your family, we'll not run a video tomorrow. We'll be back with more science news on Friday. Until then, I wish you happy holidays. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.